Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and today I'm going to show you three versions of Will the Circle Be Unbroken? This is a real classic old time and bluegrass tune it was recorded by Ralph Stanley, by the Carter family, by Mississippi John Hurt and probably most famously uh, by the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band in 1972 and they did an important album called Will the Circle Be Unbroken where basically they brought together a whole load of the, the new young uh, country players along with a lot of the old guys and uh, they played um, a lot of these songs together and it was a kind of a metaphor for the continuation of country music into the present. Um, so I'm going to give you the basic melody, I'm going to give you a bluegrass interpretation with a lot of double stops and I'm going to give you a Vassa Clements solo, a kind of a composite of some of his favourite licks. Uh, so we're going to start easy and we're going to end up uh, next to impossible but <laughs> I think we'll enjoy the journey. Right, let's start off with the basic melody which is pretty simple. One, two, three. Now, still staying with the simple melody, we're just going to add a few drones. So wherever possible, um, either above or below the melody note, we're going to put a, um, an open string. How to choose those open strings, it's really a matter of experience. There are certain notes which if you try playing an open string drone, they're not going to fit and just experience will tell you how that is. But the best way is just to go through it um, bar by bar and try and find out which you think are the best notes to, to play with it. But without those open string drones, it's not going to sound quite so country. Uh, you can also add some shuffles such as the Nashville Shuffle or the Georgia Shuffle. So uh, I'll give you that again with the backing and we will do some drones and some shuffles. let's say a C sharp and a drone with the E I will, I will do a nice big slide and what that achieves is it gives us a, a certain place where you've got a real discord but it gives you the real satisfaction of getting actually more or less in tune when you get up to the C sharp so that's, that's always a nice thing to do now with bluegrass um, the traditional thing to do is to play the melody, not to do a kind of a jazz solo, but to do the melody, but to embellish that melody. Um, usually with double stops and with little runs. So that's what we've got here. So, starting off with the uh, open A above the first two notes. And then fourth finger doubling the A note. And then keeping that fourth finger on, playing the C sharp. Now, uh, if you're anything like me, then that fourth finger is difficult to get in tune. And uh, if you try that and you're really struggling with it, then just do... Then just do a cop out and do the opening on the top. 
But if you're ready for the long haul, then do practice those four fingers. Keeping it on. Okay, so all of the first um, three bars, you're going to keep that fourth finger on. Then keeping the second finger on, bring your third finger down next to it. And then... <laughs> That's going crazy. And then from there, and then from there, we go. So the, um, the melody is there, but we put in notes underneath it. So we've got an F sharp, we've got a G under the B, and F sharp again. And then under the F sharp we've got C natural. And then from those two fingers next to one another, you slide one up and one down. And that gives us a lovely sound going to that A. So let me just give you that those first two lines again. One, two, three. it up so we've got the skeleton of the melody but we're adding quite a lot to it and that's a nice one to do on the F sharp minor chord is an F sharp with a C sharp under it and then the last line This is a typical bluegrass ending. We're doing the A chord, we've got C sharp with an E above it, B with an E above it, and then a G natural to a G sharp. And finish off with that A with a C sharp under it. So let's just do that line. Two, three, four. So let's hear all of that with the backing. This is just an example of the kind of ornamentation or the kind of way you might develop the melody. If you listen to 10 different versions from 10 different fiddle players, they will all play it differently. So it's just a question of what phrases you are familiar with as to what you put in. And if you want to learn this one, then that's fine, but don't expect that anyone is going to recognize that as a particular version. Finally, we're going to do a composite solo made from Vassar Clements um, phrases. And if you're not familiar with Vassar Clements, then he is the fiddler that you've got to listen to. Especially the album Old and in the Way, which is when I first discovered Bluegrass. And um, I thought everyone played like him, <laughs> but no. And a lot of what he does is next to impossible to do. So some of these phrases are going to be quite hard, um, including what I call the killer phrase. But um, So let's start off with the opening two notes, which are pretty hard in themselves. So what he really likes is discord, and we certainly get that here. So we're starting off with the C-sharp with the E above it, and then F-sharp with an E below it, which is about as powerful a discord as you can get, and it's difficult to get that in tune. But the effect is immediately striking. And then we're going up to um, third position, A note with an E above, below it. So you might spend the next uh, hour or so just practicing these three notes. And then we've got um, a C sharp, and then a slide down from a C natural. So going up to there, one, two, three, four, one, two. 
and then a flowing phrase. This uh, flattened seventh is a very typical Vasic phrase. And um, long bows with lots of slurs, I think, is, is in order for this. You could even do uh, a whole bar um, in one bar, in one bow. Uh, on to the next phrase. So we're starting off with C under a E note. And then up to third position, one over three, two over four, one over three. Give you that again, one, two, three, four. So that'll take you a while. And then we have uh, what I call the Vasa killer phrase. And what it sounds like is this. which is just a smear of notes. Uh, looking at the top line, let me do that a few times, one, two, three, four. Here's the bottom line. So how does that fit together? You start off with your first finger on an E and your third finger on a C sharp. And then you slide that down. This is before we even start the phrase. So we start in there. So your first two notes are and the third note is an A with an E under it. So that's just the first three notes. One, two, three, four. Then, second finger goes down on a C sharp, and your fourth finger plays an A below it. Then, <laughs> and then we're going to um, what we're aiming for is an E with your second finger, and a B with your third finger below that. But we're starting that a semitone down. So that's what we're going to do. So from the beginning. And then from there. So you've got second and third finger, first and second. Just rocking between those two. And a bit of a slide down. Now, uh, probably a lot of you will have tuned out halfway through this because it just looks impossible. This is the phrase which, uh, if you spend three months on it, you will spend the rest of your life congratulating yourself and amazing all of your fans and fellow musicians that you ever did this. And uh, every Vasa um, Clements fan will recognise this riff and will um, respect you for having learnt it. And those who've never heard of him will just think, where did that come from? So it's well worth learning. Um, so just that one again and then into the next phrase. And then... So G natural and E below it. A big stretch. One and three. Open and two. So I'll give you all of that line. One, two, three, four. Then the last line. This is a great one. It works on a, an E chord. Is the only place you can use this one really. So you're putting down an A at the bottom and a G above it. First finger and third finger. Or, and you're sliding the whole thing down a semitone, which gives that big kind of weird discord. And then, this is a, a 
typical kind of ending. And um, again, lots of slurring. But lift off and bang down the last note. So, um, no one said it was going to be easy, and <laughs> that third, that um, the killer lick is about as hard as it gets. But let's try and do all of this together. and if you got to the end thank you for persisting um, if you would like a copy of these dots then subscribe and send me an email and um, I've got a book coming out fairly soon uh, end of um, 2021 which is all about country fiddle and um, including a lot of Vassa licks and all of the background to this kind of playing so I hope some of you are going to buy that book when it comes out and um, see you again soon mm -hmm.